they would get a big possession and a put back or a kick out three or a foul. Uh, the offense rebounds, it killed us. We have to, we got to be better. We don't have a lot of room for error. And when you do make a miss, we got it. We have to rebound the ball. But, and we had trouble getting around screens and we have, we just have to be better. You mentioned your film session yesterday. I know it was with uh, Rui and Denny, but you said getting back on defense and transition was a point of emphasis. So how frustrating was it to see that not carry over tonight? No, it, it didn't. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's, all, it's all about learning and improving and, and taking things what you see and on the film and, and transferring over on the game court. Um, the first half in transition, they – uh, their kick aheads and ball is a fantastic player and the, the way he plays and they were running and we were we were we were chasing chasing them and we didn't get back and show a defensive disposition and in, in, in transition and that gave them a lot of confidence in that second quarter uh, and then the third. Ava. Scott, um, how did you assess your team's energy level today? Um, at, at times bad, at times good. It was really inconsistent. Uh, the, the, and we have to, we have to be in and we have to be on at all times. Our energy has to be, we have a lot of moving parts and, and that's the one thing that has to be a constant. And it was up and down tonight. It has to get better. Um, we still got a chance to, to finish up this road trip in the right way and we can split the trip uh, but we got to we got to we got to do better we got to be better i got to do better but we got to also take pride in that individual defense that that teams are attacking teams are attacking players and we got to we got to step up and take the challenge and, and make them miss shots and not get beat by one or two dribble drives and 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 it's, it's those are the things that are bothering us right now and I think um, a couple of days ago, you mentioned that uh, Russell might end up playing a couple of back-to-backs this month. Is that still um, an option for him? And, and kind of what determines that decision if he, if he feels good to do back-to-backs? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely an option uh, tomorrow. We don't know yet. See how he feels uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, he's been getting better uh, day by day. And, you know, he you know, took some time off and, it's coming back, but this is an opportunity, this early game today and a later game tomorrow. It's very unique, back-to-back. It's not a long flight, but there's a chance. We'll just see how he feels tomorrow. We're not going to put him out there if he's not ready to, to, to come back and bounce back from a game. Uh, but we'll know that uh, more it's probably tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. Fred. Hey Scott, uh, you you really front ended your timeouts tonight in a way that I I don't recall you doing. You didn't have any remaining come like midway through the third quarter. What? Why did you approach it that way today specifically? And what were you trying to accomplish in those using those timeouts so aggressively? Well, trying to trying to stop the runs. We were we were bleeding, so just trying to do anything. I didn't care about the technical. I didn't care about not having timeouts. Uh, that didn't mean anything. We needed some urgency, and and that was that was it right there. It wasn't nothing that strategy wise. It was just trying to stop it. And I wasn't worried about you know the last uh, second timeout in the in the fourth quarter. Hey Scott, um, we saw for the first time in a long. Uh, time that you didn't open the third quarter with uh, Denny and you started with uh, Bretons and uh, with uh, Wagner. Uh, is there any particular reason or there is anything about Denny's game that you wanted him to improve? Yeah, just um, we needed to make a change. We were down at a, uh, a sizable number and we needed that we needed some different energy and some different uh, players. DV is He's a shot maker. He hasn't made uh, the shots that he will eventually make. Uh, we needed a spark. I thought we came out in the third quarter and had a, about four or five good looks. We just couldn't. We just couldn't connect on any of them, uh, but one, I think. And but he has to be ready next game. It's a. It's a. It's 
a tough league. It's you have to you have to learn game by game, and you and you learn it day by day. You know, he has to come back and bounce back and and, and play better uh, tomorrow. It's the things that we need done. We need them. We need them done. We need him to be consistent on on some of those things. We're not asking for for him to make every shot. We're just asking him to be uh, prepared and being aware and who you're guarding and how you guard them. And those are scouting report things that we have to get better with. Neil. Scott, obviously you guys like to run uh, in transition on offense, but then when you sometimes don't get a great shot or miss a shot and then that carries over on the defensive end, how do you balance that when it's, you know, not – working out well on offense, but then even costing you more on defense. Yeah, I mean, t tonight and the last game, and this is something that we're trying to get away from, where if you don't make a shot, I mean, there was a time there, I don't even know if we made 15% of our threes, and we were taking quite a few open ones too. But we got to get away from, we can't let that affect the, the other end. And that's been that's been the case. And, you know, and that's what we're trying to break that, we're trying to break that trend. When you don't make a shot and it's a three and it's a wide open shot, you still got to step up and take it and, and shoot it if that's the shot that you're capable of making. But if you don't, we can't let it affect our first three steps getting back. And and it has the last couple of nights. And we got to we got to be better and we got to be aware. We got to be cognizant that that's 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 what happened. And a lot of it's not just young players, old players, it's every player. And you know when you don't see that ball go through the rim through the basket, sometimes it gets down to your confidence, but we still got to be able to get back in defense. I thought, th I thought that affected us the last couple of games and we got to, we got to get that out of our system. Ish, how do you sum up these last two games? Um, obviously some disappointing losses for you guys. Yeah. Um, so we were two and two, uh, beat Brooklyn, emotional high. Um, I don't even know who we played in the middle. We lost, and then uh, the Miami probably were our best defensive game in the last two years. Um, and then uh, you know, like you said, these last two games have been a situation where they've stopped us, and we haven't stopped them. Um, you know, they held us. I want to say both games to low, either you know, high nineties or low hundreds. Um, so you know how the game, you know how the league is. No one's gonna feel sorry for you. Uh, you got to pick your chin up. Get on that plane and uh, head to Chicago and try to get a win. Um, so in these last six games, we could be three and three and start feeling a little bit better ourselves. But we have to, you know, bring a level of consistency, uh, defense and offense every single night. But most important, defense. And it sounds like a broken record because we've been talking about it since last year. But it is a must, and it's just kind of just guarding your yard. I remember my college coach used to say that guard your yard, and uh, so that's something that that we have to do. But we're okay. Okay, let's don't get too high. Let's don't get too low, um, and, and continue to push and continue to press. How do you change the energy of a team? You know, when you come out and maybe, you know, Scott Brooks said you guys were a little bit flat on on letting them get offensive boards. How do you guys change that collectively when you know all you can really do is control yourself? Let me tell you this though, Chase. That's a good question. Um, and you know, y'all seen me for two years, and, and I try to do it in my own different way. Uh, the pace of the game. Um, you know, in some other different ways defensively and, and different things. So um, that's what you have to do. But as a collective team, we got to rebound as a collective team. Uh, those guys are athletes. I seen Miles Bridges one time throw the ball off the glass, missed it on purpose, and went to go get his own rebound. Uh, and, you know, he's a great athlete. I remember watching him when I played in Detroit when he was at Michigan State. But no offense to him, you got to put it, you got you to hit him. And we have to do it as a collective team. We all have to go in and rebound. Um, and, you know, take an offensive foul, take a defensive foul, just boxing out. Um, and, and that's something that you got to do from the beginning, because if you can get stops and run, that's the way we want to play. Fred. It, ish, why, why do you guys give up as many quick baskets as you do after made buckets? Um, that's a good question. I think if uh, we could figure that out, we might have won the last two games. Um, but uh, all just aside, Fred, we we have to uh, – teams are running at us on the makes. Uh, it kind of looks like how we used to do teams last year. On the makes, on the misses, we were pushing it down. 
um, and coming at, at guys um, to the point where, you know, we were just trying to get to 120, 125. And it, it seems to be these last two games, the teams, Miami and Charlotte, has seen that to be, you know, a weakness. And, um, you know, they tried to exploit that and score, on, you know, in fast break points. Um, but once we get into fast break, I mean, slow down a fast break and get them at half court, we're not bad defensively. But those last two games, they've, they've really pushed the basketball at us. And it's an effort situation, just getting back, running back. Uh, once you score the basket, get back and uh, just claim a man. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't have to be your specific man or your specific matchup. Uh, so that's something that we do have to work on because Chicago not going to slow down either. Ava? Ish, I think I know your answer because you're always so optimistic. But with that win at Miami, when you guys have that really great defensive game, how do you kind of process that now is it something that's like okay we know we can we can do that so why aren't we doing it and it's like a source of frustration or is it something like okay we know we can do that how do we recreate that situation or get back to that place like how do you kind of think about that win yeah Ava, that's a great question i think what they did miami did is we got them in the half court played good defense held them to 100 points so we played in the second game when we scored, they was out. When we missed, they were out. So they were going to challenge our fast break uh, defense um, and our transition defense. And, and so it, it does, you know, feel good, obviously, able to know, like, all right, we can play great defense. But really what it's about is, it sounds bad, like, and I'm home, but it really just comes down to, like, guard your dude. Like, that's really what it comes down to. Like, I'm not going to let you score. Uh, like I used to do back home. Uh, you know, you're just rolling the basketball out and just making sure you your guy's not scoring. And obviously, we have our defensive concepts and different things like that. But what it comes down to is transition defense, uh, offensive rebounds, which was tonight, and then just kind of stand in front of your man. And if you kind of do those three things, those are the controllable. Guys are going to hit tough shots. Uh, guys are going to make tough shots. Um, but those are kind of the controllable things. Pick and roll defense is difficult. Dribble handoff, you know, are difficult. But you can stay in front of your guy. Uh, slow down, you know, the, you know, the fast break points and then rebound, then, I mean, now you're putting yourself in a situation to, to be one of the top tier defenses in the league. And you said um, we're all okay, but what's the kind of atmosphere in the locker room after, after this one today? Yeah, it's a tough one, especially coming from a Miami game where, you know, we, we kind of, you know, you know, they punched us in the mouth, uh, not literally, but you, you know what I mean? So, it's a situation to where they kind of did the same thing. And, and so we have to look ourselves in the mirror, learn from it, grow from it. And we got it back to back tomorrow. Uh, Ava, you know how the NBA is. They, you know, the guys are not nice. They're not going to come in and be like, man, Washington done lost two in a row. Let's give them a game. Nah, heck no. Nah. They come in the punches in the mouth too. So we're going to have to stand up, bow our neck, and, and try to get a win. Thanks, Ish. Yes, man. Neil. Ish, obviously you guys like to run on offense, but sometimes when you guys miss an early shot, then, then that puts even more pressure on your guys' transition defense. So what's the balance there? Yeah, so what I've tried to do um, is try to, on the makes, get us in our offense somehow, like our secondary break. Our secondary break, whether it's open, whether it's through, whatever the case is, just um, whatever offense to get the continuity, get everybody touching the basketball. And then when the ball comes in the second side, then that's when, for me, I'm going to try to be aggressive and I want guys to be aggressive. Um, but it's a strategic run. Um, you know, last year, as y'all know, offensively, we were top five, top 10 in the league. We were flying them and down the floor. And, um, but we gave them a lot defensively as well. Um, so it is something that, that I've thought about and looked at. Each year isn't the same. This is a different year. Uh, so what I've tried to think of on the miss, the more stops we can get, the more we can run. Uh, and then the one on the makes, we're still running. We're still running with pace. But it's a must for us to get us in our secondary offense, everybody touching the basketball, getting us in good offense. Um, and when you do that, you're right. It doesn't put as much pressure on your, uh, on your um, transition defense. All right, last question here for... Uh, Rez. Hi. Uh, my question is regarding Denny Ivda. Do you think his progress is satisfying and do you think he can be an, uh, reach an all-star status? And do, how different is he compared to other rookies? 
Yeah, the sky's the limit for uh, Dan. Uh, he keeps working, he keeps pushing, he keeps pressing. He's going to achieve any and everything he can He can achieve. Uh, obviously, I, I'm happy with his progression. Uh, he can shoot the basketball, he can create. Uh, he's really good and underrated on the block, posting up. He's really good off pick and rolls. He's got great size. Defensively, he's constantly getting better. Uh, Denny has a lot in the tank. Um, and, and so it's a, it's a development. And a lot of the rookies are behind the eight ball simply because it was no summer league. Um, we had to come back as soon as they got drafted. Um, they were going straight to their teams. It, you know, it was a lot, a lot of difficulty. So you got to be patient. Know it's a slow grind. And uh, he's getting there. But uh, he's going to reach any and everything that he wants to reach with the work, um, you know, with patience. And uh, just listening. A lot of times you just, as when you're young, just soaking up everything. I think when you're older, you got to soak up everything. I remember a high school coach, I'm going to leave you with this. He told me the day you stop learning is the day you need to die. So uh, I'm going to keep learning because I want to live a long life. Brad, I guess coming off of a tough loss already on Sunday, coming coming out with the same kind of outcome today, What where do you guys go from here? First praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't want to sound like a smart ass Neil, but we're going to Chicago. We this shit here. Just going to Chicago. Do you kind of just forget about these last two games or? Yeah, I'm going to drive myself crazy if we do that. Like, we, you got to throw them out, man. It's, it's unfortunate, you know. It's like we got to have some pride, man. It's a dog. Why no dog? Just kind of just let teams walk over us, and that shit is frustrating. So, yeah, you just got to leave it here, man. We got we got a bus kick twice, 20 plus, 30 plus, two nights in a row. It's never never appealing to anybody. Uh, so, yeah, we just move on to Chicago. Chase. Brad, when you're in a game and you feel like a team is walking all over you, how do you change the energy of a team? Well, I mean, it's tough because we're all adults. You know, I can't do it for guys. You know, I can only do it for myself. You know, all we can do is encourage the next man to be ready to go and, you know, accept the challenge. That's, I can't do that for someone else. It's like, I can't do you guys' job. You guys can't do my job. You know what I'm saying? It's like everybody has a role. Everybody has a responsibility. And we all got to do them. You know, when we're guarding our man, your objective is to guard your man, help the next man, and vice versa. But we, for whatever reason, we don't do that. And, uh, I mean, Coach is doing it. You know, you see the little subtle signs he does. He's benching guys. He's taking guys out early. Like, you would think, like, that would, like, kind of click and roll over for us. But it, it, it doesn't. So, uh, I mean, your guess is probably as good as mine. And during and after games like this, What's the locker room like, you know, at halftime and, and post game is, I would imagine you guys are pretty frustrated. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's not, there's no laughter, there's no chatter, there's no, you know, nobody's happy, you know, everybody's, I guess the only positive about it is like, it seems like we care, but it's like, we got to carry that over onto the floor, not after we got to ask what, you know? So I think that's the, it's kind of frustrating part, but you know, we, just got to keep, got to stay together and keep chipping. Fred. Hey, Brad. Uh, I, I I wish I didn't have to ask you this in a post-game setting, but such is the way of the world. Um, at least on a positive note, you, you, you're you leading in, in all-star voting right now that came out a couple of days ago. I know that's a big change from last year. And I'm just wondering what your reaction was when you uh, when you saw the voting when it came out. A hell of a day to ask this for it. Um, I know, but last time was a hell of a day too. <laughs> Wait till today. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, you know what, it, I'm blessed and honored. I, I, I would be lying to say I'm, I'm, you know, I'm excited about that. That's a, that's a huge honor. Uh, you know, to be able to gain that recognition from fans around the world, um, you know, that's, that means the world to me for sure. You know, uh, obviously I'd rather have more wins under my column and, and in, in that phase, but I'm also kind of confused too, Fred, because 
I think we both know why, but uh, it's like, what was so different from this year and last year? But to each his own, you know? I appreciate everybody that shows their love and support. And well, I guess we're finally tuning in. So hopefully we keep going, keep voting. Christos? Let us ask you, what was the big, the main issue of the last couple of games for your team and you lost with uh, more than 20 points every game and how how important is to react in the game against the Bulls? Uh, well, we lost this game how we pretty much lost every other. We can't guard nobody. And when we can't defend, you know, it, it, it shows. Uh, we were giving up 30 to 40 points a quarter, especially beginning game. You know, that's, that's not acceptable. I'm looking at our plus minus. I was like minus 27 or something. It's like some of that, some of it feels unreal half the time, but it's like we, we just, we aren't guard. We aren't guard, you know, and then offensively, we're very stagnant. Uh, we're not aggressive. You know, we allow other teams to be their aggressors and we're going to be out of our mind if we think Chicago is going to be any different. You know, they're a hungry team. They smacked us already earlier in the year. So it's, we got to have the mentality that we are desperate. We're desperate for wins. You know, we're in no position to celebrate a win. We're in no position to be high about a win. You know, we, we got to put something together. You know, obviously it's one at a time, but, you know, playing teams in our division, Charlotte, they're hungry. You know, we need these games, but not even that, like come close down the line. You know, we need these against Chicago too. So every game matters, every game counts. Uh, you eventually run out of time, so. There's no more like, oh, wait on guys, we're healthy, we're back, you know, that's, we gotta be better. Thank you. Ava. Hey Brad, um, how do you think of that good win that you guys had last week in Miami with the really strong defensive performance? Is it is it about trying to recreate what you guys did on offense in that game or is it like frustrating because you can't figure out how to recreate it? How, what's, how do you kind of look back on that, I guess? So like offensively, the only thing you can really control is not turning the ball over and getting a shot up every time. If we can control making shots, we'd win every game, you know, or we'd be 100% from the field. Uh, you know, that's that's kind of out of our control. You know, guys are going to miss shots. Guys are going to make shots. You know, as long as we get one up every time, I think that's that at least allows us time to get our defense set. We turn the ball over, can't. You know, teams are killing us in transition, you know. So that has to be – you know, better for us in terms of that end. And then it's just a will on defense. You know, it's a, it's just a personal will that you have to want to guard. You have to want to get back in transition. You have to want to box out. You have to want to rebound. Those are all things that you, we all physically, individually can control. You know, it's not like a shooting a ball where it's, oh, you don't know, maybe it'll go in, maybe it won't. You can control whether you guard your man, whether you box out, you know, whether you're in position to get a rebound. All of those things are controllable. And kind of on the all-star note, would you, have you thought about if you would go to the all-star game? Like, are you, would you be excited to go? Would you, is that weird uh, for you that they're doing it this year? Currently, I kind of, I'm not excited about it, honestly. I mean, just from the protocols and everything we have to go through now, I think, no disrespect to the all-star game, but, you know, it's, it's a pandemic going on, you know, All-Star Weekend is about the experience for the fans, for everybody, you know, for families to be in an environment. And that's not going to be there. You know, we're not going to be at appearances. We're not going to be able to do the things we normally do. So I don't think it's I don't think it's worth the force. You know, um, I don't think there's any benefit for either side of us or the PA. I mean, the PA side, the league side. I don't think there's a benefit for anybody besides people watching guys who you know, which we're doing on a daily anyway. So uh, I don't know. I mean, obviously we gotta we gotta vote on it and make a decision about it, but uh, I don't know. Thanks, Brad. All right, last question to Penny. Hey, Bradley. Um, it seems like uh, the team is not struggling offensively, but on the defensive side, it seems like you cannot make the adjustments you need to make in order to stop the opponents. What do you think are the adjustments the entire team is supposed to make? It's, a, it's like uh, effort-wise, it's um, something you need to communicate with each other more. 
what do you think are the points of emphasis you need to improve? Everything you just named, unfortunately. Uh, we have to be a lot better. I mean, defense always starts with, like I said before, your, your individual pride and will and want to guard. You know, we have to want to do our job on that end of the floor. Uh, if you have just one person who's out of sync, who's not bought in, it, it ruins the continuity and the strings that we're attached to. Um, so just accepting that challenge, uh, you know, and understand that has to be our identity and we won't win games unless you guard, you know, we, we, we're not, it's no disrespect to us, but we're not put together well enough to outscore teams. That's not how, that's not who we are. You know, that's not how we should be. That's not how we should identify ourselves. You know, we're not going to outscore you. Uh, we have to be able to get that into our head that we're a defensive team. We have to be a physical team. And, you know, we just got to keep, we got to just keep like pounding that into guys' heads and pounding it into, you know, some practicing and just constantly working at it because, you know, right now we're not getting it. It's not clicking for whatever reason. You know, we, we have to have a will and that desire to want to guard, you know, get pissed off that your man scores on you. That's not happening. It's not happening. Hey, Russ, how would you describe uh, these last two losses following what was a pretty good win for you guys? Loss, simple as that. Why do you think you lost tonight, today in particular? Shit, I don't know. I'll look at it and find out, though. Fred? Hey, Russ, uh, specifically, you guys have given up a lot of quick buckets after made baskets. Why do you think that continues to happen? I don't know, but I'll find out. Anybody else? Yeah, I got I got one more. Russ, Go Russ it's un unrelated to, to the game tonight, but I'm just curious. You played in All-Star so many times, and I'm just curious what your perspective is on the league adding uh adding an all-star game uh you know i haven't even <clears throat> haven't even looked into it or paid much attention to what's going on um as it pertains to all-star um at all um obviously a lot of guys don't want to play it or i mean you know if i was playing in it then i would have much to say but i don't so i don't really care what happens